breaking down the curious relationship between wildfires and tornadoes. Yes, the wildfire season is off to a rampant start. The active weather season is ripe with storm and tornado outbreaks, especially stateside and across North America. But could there be a connection? Let's look at the data and extrapolate with Kevin McKay here. I have this here, Kevin. In 2022, Canada experienced a record-breaking 129 tornadoes. And then the next year, in 2023, amid the worst wildfire season in history, there were only 86 tornadoes. So this is an unparalleled connection. And researchers are still trying to figure this out. But could there be a relationship between an active wildfire season and maybe less tornadoes? Well, it's looking that way, but really to find a real link you got to look at more than two years but it's also very tough when you have two variables that have such unique characteristics so um for instance let's just first talk about the smoke so last year 2023 every part of north america was impacted by the smoke whether it's coming from bc california quebec ontario it was everywhere now we also talk about, uh, in storm conversations, we talk about the energy, the instability and breaking a cap. Now the cap is kind of the lid on the pot and the smoke can actually uh, or prevent that cap from dissolving. It can mm -hmm. prevent the warmth getting down to the surface, increasing the energy, and it can actually just knock off just the severity of the storms. So in a year where there is a veil of smoke across the country from intense wildfires, that sunlight can't penetrate to the surface and create that extra bit of instability. So we may still have the same number of storms, but might not be to the same severity, which may result in less tornadoes, correct? Yeah, you could have all the ingredients there that let's say um, you had a, a little more energy than that storm would get stronger, it would get higher, it would get into better rotation, then the storm can uh, spawn a tornado. Whereas if it doesn't quite get high enough, it just becomes just a run of the mill strong tornado, but can also have the opposite effect when you're looking at the actual fire. Okay, and let's talk about that in the context of context of this year. This year we are having already intensifying wildfire season from massive drought, uh, lack of a snowpack, from a warmer than normal winter, and an early start to the wildfire season. Can wildfires spur on storms? They can. We've seen some really beautiful, uh, in their own way, uh, pyrocumulus clouds. So that's when the smoke is rising and the heat is so intense that it lifts it so high that any moisture in that is able to condense into its own storm. Now, usually these are very short-lived. Once they drift away, they're out of that dynamic field and they start to weaken. But there was an excellent example of this uh, earlier this season in Texas. In the, in the Texas Panhandle, there was a grass fire and that smoke on satellite, it was just fueling all day, all day, all day and the environment was, the cap was strong enough that it didn't look like storms are going to develop, but that the heat from that fire was enough to just tip it over the edge and spark a, uh, a supercell that actually then impacted Oklahoma and Kansas. An interesting and curious relationship that we will keep mulling over here at the Weather Network as well. Last year, 18 million hectares of forest went up into smoke with a really active wildfire season. We're going over the numbers this year, but it has been an early start. Yeah, and a lot of this fires, actually half the fires in Alberta are just coming alive again from last season. Only half of them have started, initiated this year, be it from lightning or human cause. So that isn't a good sign. Thank you.